Hey guys, welcome back to another week of 10 Minute Tuesday. Today, what I wanted to talk to you about is taxidermy. It's not really something you talk about a whole much in about a whole a whole lot. Whole much. A not whole, a whole much. much you talk about, Joe. You don't talk about it a whole <laughs> much here in uh, t- uh, waterfowl taxidermy here, but I'm a huge proponent of waterfowl taxidermy. I grew up around it. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And now, more than ever, all of my friends are not doing taxidermy. Like, nobody. And I don't understand it because I just grew up around a bunch of taxidermy birds and wanting to hear the stories about them and hearing about how amazing that one hunt was, how old that band was on that mallard that's hanging 25 feet up on the vaulted ceiling. I've always loved it. I think it's so cool. And a goal of mine is to get uh, the drake of every species of duck mounted at some point. And so that's a lot of money Mm -hmm. on an average of like 350 bucks per duck if you're using a good taxidermist and times 41 41 species of waterfowl or 43 whatever it is Mm -hmm. major investment so what's 41 times 350 believe you're into like twelve thousand dollars some some like 13 or 14 and obviously doing the math 14 350 there you go yeah 14 350 unacceptable so that's way too much money but if you think about it in 20 years of waterfowling spread out it's like is it really that big of a deal yeah you know it's almost a thousand like what is that like eight hundred dollars a year sure you get two birds mounted a year something like that yeah, in 20 seven, years seven to eight hundred yeah. bucks a year so it's like is it really that bad to have that memory hanging from your wall like i don't think so but like the way that i was going to involve you in on this is why don't you taxidermy any birds or why don't you feel the need to that's preserve a great it question that's a great question so i guess a few reasons number one you have to have a a space that I think is like that works for it. Right. You have Mm -hmm. to a spot either in your house or wherever you want to put these birds where you're like it, a fits this area B it's not my living room and C, (laughs) you know, like, I don't know. I think someday dude, if, if I can have a more serious like waterfowl room per se. Yeah. Then I think that that would be something that I would be more interested in is starting to actually like, I don't know, like mount birds. Um, That said, I do feel a couple of things. Number one, I think we're fortunate in the sense that we capture a lot of this, not only on video, but also in photos, right? So for me, half the reason, like you said, you want to keep a mount of a bird is because you want the memory of it. And so I feel like a lot of the birds that we've shot are that are birds that I would mount we've taken pictures of and taken pictures or video from the day of that hunt, right? So the memory is there. It's preserved for me. And I think that's also a big reason now why people aren't mounting as many birds. I mean, think about photography in the 70s and the 80s versus what we have now. I mean, back then you're taking like disposable photos and they were going to fade over time because you were going to print them at Kmart. And so in 20 years, it's so yellow the photo's like, oh, I, I think that's probably a pretty bird, you know, <laughs> but you had to mount it. And then people can see the actual bird. Now, digital photography, bro, like what we can capture and see, dude, you can see that bird so good. I don't know. The other thing is $14,350. Like, let's, let's Boy, be honest, man. Like, and no one said that you have to do what I did. No. which is, Or yeah. my goal, which yeah. is to mount every bird. But, no. you know. Like, let's say you shoot a, a double-banded geo tracker, Not mounting it, probably. You're probably not going to mount it. I don't think so. I'll take a picture of it. We'll have video and picture of that all <laughs> happening, and I'll never forget that bird. And this is why part of the reason that I made that box for my parents and that we have the Vortex box here that I print all the photos and put them in. Yeah. Dude, like, it's kind of the same exact thing. I think the bigger thing is the number one reason that I would say people should do taxidermy is because how often do you open that box and look at the photos, right? When you mount a bird, the memory is, it's hanging in that room. So every time you walk into that room and see that bird, you think about that moment. And I obviously don't think that I open a box enough that I always am thinking about and seeing, you know, these different birds that I've shot. And sure, you you can hang photos on the wall and stuff, but... I don't know, man. I just think it has to be a pretty special bird at this point. Like, we have such amazing ways to capture that <laughs> moment. I think it's also uh, important to... I also pulled out my bufflehead mount. 
because Cal was talking that entire time that I grabbed the, the mount off the wall. But, like, this just kind of reminds me of, like, I don't know. I just, I love looking at it. You know, yeah, pictures are great, you know, but at the same time, I think a physical replica of the bird is super cool, personally. No, it and it's is an really instant cool. icebreaker, so, like, you don't have the space, right? So yeah. let's say, is it is it a dream of yours to have your own hunting cabin or your own lodge? Of course. Okay. And in that so then, scenario, absolutely. So then, then you're going to start trying to put birds on the wall at that point. Yes. Now you're trying to create memories or whatever versus just already having the memories. You can put them in storage somewhere. You can hang them at someone else's cabin in the yeah. meantime, you know? Yeah. And so that's where my thought is, is like, I'm definitely going to own a lodge someday. We are going to own a lodge someday. That's the goal. And, <clears throat> wow, I covered the mic. Yeah, I talked, noticed. Yeah. And then coughed into the mic. Yeah. It's amazing. But, <laughs> Actually, <laughs> such a great sequence. I'm uh, dyslexic of my hands. So, no, it's just one of those things where I want to start collecting them now so that I can say, oh, yeah, I shot that banded spec at Bobby Guy's. You know, I shot this snow goose when I was guiding for this guy years ago. You know, like, each bird has its story. I'm not trying to fill the totally, walls. No. It's just already there. It's yeah. it are, it's already got the stuff in there. And the, and this isn't a thing, Joey, where I'm like, I don't no, like I know. taxidermy. I, I, I think it's great. It's super cool. I just, yeah, I don't, A, don't think about it because I don't have a, a great place for me to hang or put a bunch of birds right now. Mm -hmm. And B, it's anywhere from 350 to $450 every time I want to mount a damn bird, mm -hmm. you know? And then I have to be like, would I do something else with that money? I don't know. And that's the reality. But you also have to think about the people who still have that trade, right? So you think about taxidermists these days. It's really hard to find a good taxidermist. Yep. Damn near impossible. And when you do find one, he's got a two-year waiting list. Yep. It's like, damn, why aren't more people learning about this? Because not many people are doing it. And it's not like that big of a demand. I mean, there is definitely the demand, but who is like, I'm going to grow up and take the fat off of the skin of that deer's hide so that it doesn't rot out so that guy can put it on his damn wall. Right. That's what I want to be when I grow up. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like a dying art. Yeah. And so I feel, I almost kind of feel obligated to give that, like give back to like, the. I feel like I'm giving back to the community. You know? I hear you, man. I don't feel that way. Like I don't feel like I have to like mount birds so that a taxidermist stays in business. It's not the only reason, you know? But I think you understand what I'm trying I to do. Get. I'm not saying you're saying it's the only reason. I'm just saying it doesn't doesn't contribute <laughs> to my reasoning. The other side of that too, though, right, is guys that are really good at taxidermy because it is a dying art. Number one, they don't need your three hundred fifty dollar bird. Right. They just don't. Okay. Good taxidermists have two years of work, like you said. So like those guys are busy, man. And especially too, like with deer mounts and stuff, that's a way bigger market. <laughs> I actually think a lot of the time, guys might not even know this, but I think that waterfowl birds get pushed two years, not because maybe they're exactly two years out, but because they know that over the course of the next two years, they're just going to find a good time to do it because they're not prioritizing your bird over deer or African animals or anything that people trophy yeah, yeah, hunt. Yeah, cost less. Yeah, of course. And so they're just like, yeah, it's going to be about two years and they could probably do it in like three weeks. You know, yeah. but they're like, yeah, I'll just fit it in. <laughs> you know what? You know what's kind of crazy is uh, when we were down at Angel Wing and we were talking to Logan about how he was uh, uh, mule deer hunting down there. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, there was a taxidermist right here. And so it's way cheaper for me to drop it off at the guy's place and have him do it. And they never got it back because he went out of business. Right. You know, that guy. That's insane. Now, if you think about that, if you're in a destination spot, like Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, right? There's not a whole lot going on there. It's a lot of outdoor stuff. Yeah. You know, like it's not a booming town by any means. Right. So like the amount of work that's there is not a whole lot. So like if you're thinking of moving your family there because you love to waterfowl hunt, you better be able to work remote. Yeah. You know? Right. Otherwise, you might be in trouble. Right. So if you're looking for a, a line of work and you want to move out to the middle of nowhere and you know it's got a great deer population, antelope, whatever, stuff that people want to get taxidermy where they fly in from all over the country, maybe think about taking that up and getting really good at it. Because I bet you you can make a shitload of money, man. Yeah. Think about it. You can do a deer in 
four days if you're hoofing it. No, no pun intended. Right. You know, <laughs> I literally did not mean to do that. So insane. <laughs> so stupid. Hoof it. You yeah, know? if you're just hoofing it, dude. Yeah. Just hoof it. Dude. No, but if you think about it, like 800 to 1200 bucks for a deer mount really shouldn't take you that long if that's all you got going on. Like, that's your job. You could crank out like a hundred a year if you really wanted to. What is that? 120 grand. 120 grand. Right there. That's a damn good living, dude. That's pretty good. You know, yeah. and then you just throw in birds whenever you're slow, which you're probably not. No, I will agree with you that, like, if somebody was committed to the art of taxidermy and they started it and just committed like to it. Like, mastered it. Hey, dude, you're going to make decent money. You're going to be able to. If you're to, in that kind of an area. Yeah. Come on. No, I, I completely agree with you. What about and you, I, Carter? I think it's cool. I have one bird taxidermied. Who's up? <laughs> Don't laugh at me. <laughs> I have zero, so I don't even <laughs> Chicago know Chicago boy. Hey, it was a gadwall. There you go. Oh, big, no. big brown patch. And it was one of my first ones I shot because they don't they don't go out there that, that often. Or they didn't. We didn't used to see them very often, but it was just me and a buddy in a really cool spot. And I thought, you know, it was a cool bird. I didn't think I'd shoot another gadwall that nice in a while. So I thought I'd taxidermy it. And I tried when I was hunting a lot more to do one bird a year. Obviously, it didn't work very well. Um, but with me taking pictures now, I, I, I picked up the gun on one hunt last year. It was when we went to yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. But other than that, I, I don't really hunt anymore, so I don't taxidermy any birds anymore. But if I started hunting more, I'd absolutely try to do one bird a year just cause it's cool to see those memories and save them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't I, know. It's an interesting thing. I had a bunch of birds in my freezers here. It's so like, I got like lent or given a bunch of those small mini fridge freezers like I have behind me, but the whole thing, it's like a freezer that's about sure, this tall. Yeah. So I stuffed them full of birds. I literally got them for free. And, uh, I was gone hunting for four days or I was gone eight days. That's when my transmission blew out in Kansas. Mm -hmm. And I had eight birds that had the most incredible memories, stories, everything, and they were perfect. Every single one of those birds were perfect. It was uh, two canvas backs, a speck from Bobby's, and then um, a snow goose that had a, a black, or it was a blue goose that had a black lightning bolt going all the way down its head. I had a super cool mount picked up for him and a couple other ducks. I think one of them uh, was a mallard that I was going to put my replica band on mm -hmm. that's on my lanyard. And so, like, I lost, like, seven birds that had such unbelievable stories. Like, at Bobby's place, the first year that he opened it, you know, and we shot that unbelievable bar belly that was just black on yeah, its stomach. Yeah. And I'm just like, fuck yeah. I had a sick-ass snow goose, sick-ass blue goose. I had those two canvas backs, and I had an unbelievable widgeon. Like, just stud. And it all got lost when I was gone because the, the fuse popped or something. And then my roommates said, oh, yeah, the, the freezer went out, uh, so I had to take all my food out of there. There's a lot of blood at the bottom. I think you had birds in there, right? And all my birds were sitting in blood. Like, they took Don't. out their shit and left my birds in there, and mm. I was pissed. Yeah. That was, like, the big thing where it's like, get out. <laughs> that was, like, the big thing where it's <laughs> like, uh, I have so much resentment towards you, and I was not nice to those people for, like, five months. Yeah. Like, I was so pissed time. about it. It was time. It was also time. So, I was getting married. By the way, a couple takeaways for taxidermy. Birds cost anywhere from 350 bucks to 500 bucks. You're probably going to get put on, like, a two-year waiting list when you go at, to a at good least, taxidermist. At least year. six years to a month. At six their, months. Or six six years. months? <laughs> wow. Why am I dyslexic <laughs> with my words? What's up with that tonight? I don't know. No, it's it's been happening regularly. What? Honestly, I think I have a problem. It's not good. But six months to a year at a minimum... And then it's usually about two years. If a taxidermist says it's three hundred bucks and he can do it in a couple weeks, just take just ask for some else, pictures. Bro. No, we'll just ask for some pictures. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they're just learning, but you know, and that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I had a ring build done by a friend's younger brother, just learning how to do taxidermy. I'm like, yep, cool. I remember this. You know, paid him a hundred bucks. I'm like, sick. And he did a hundred merganser too. That that's another bird that I lost to the freezer, by the way. Beautiful, ah. and. uh I'm like, cool, sounds good. Brought it to me, and it was so not good. 
Yeah. And I'm like, oh, you butchered this It was one of those Mount Mondays or whatever. Oh, yeah. You could have definitely. On split read? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was not. That's really funny. Mangled Mount Monday. There you go. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Uh, Guys, thanks for listening to another 10-Minute Tuesday. Leave a review. We'll see you guys soon.